You used to be a Christian hating gay activist. I oh, hated Christians. Foul. Where, Get away from yeah, me. Yeah, let's start there. <laughs> yeah. like what, what happened? Did you grow up in a Christian home? And I then- grew up in an agnostic atheist home. I okay. went to a Christian school um, and that produced a lot of conflict in me as a young gay man at the age of 14. And I thought, again, this whole dilemma, why would God allow me to have these desires, do nothing to change them and condemn me for them? Like, what kind of idiot is that? Like, that is not a real God. So I'm going to become an atheist. That was you know, which is the very common trajectory of most people who are queer today in the church. And finally, this beautiful space is opened where they don't have to live under that anymore. And I understand that deeply. I was there. And then I went and did a cultural studies postmodern degree at University of Technology, Sydney, got hooked up with like postmodern theory, queer theory, gender theory, (laughs) all the theories. Critical theory before woke was woke. I am You know, that wasn't a term. I don't even like that term personally, but like that was what I imbibed in that degree. And then in the middle of that degree, in a pub in the gay quarter of Sydney, I had a radical like salvation experience when someone offered me prayer and said, have you experienced the love of God and didn't know anything about the theology of these questions, but just knew Jesus. Okay. Tell me, tell me what happened. So three months before this, I'd had a debate with my uncle about the existence of God. And he was a Pentecostal lawyer who was cisgender, white and heterosexual. So he had absolutely no intersectional capital and I was ready to destroy my cultural enemy. (laughs) Um, And I was like, Sydney Morning Herald is my future journalistic career. Here I come. Uh, (laughs) And so I said, I said to him, there is no absolute truth. You crazy idiot. Like you can't even communicate truth with language, let alone talk about God. You're deluded and look at what the the church has done to queer people, women, everybody. Just stop. You you know, living with a first century Palestinian Jewish carpenter in the sky is not going to help anyone. Can you just zip it? (laughs) (laughs) And he said to me, well, David, you said there's no absolute truth. That's an absolute truth. And you just used language to communicate that. So you just doubly contradicted yourself. So I talked about the postmodern theory of language. And then he had a prophetic vision that in three months' time I'd become a Christian, the Holy Spirit would come upon me. I didn't know about any of that. Um, And then three months later I was in a pub in the gay quarter of Sydney and someone prayed for me um, and asked me that question, have you experienced the love of God? And what was interesting is in the backstory I was very involved in left-wing politics and had seen a lot of hypocrisy in the political world and I was really disenchanted with it and I was like, there has to be more to life than this. And I had so many boyfriends, so many relationships, wonderful boyfriends, but I just, and they kept saying to me, David, there's something you're looking for that like we can't fulfill. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how great the relationship is in all those ways, like this one, I cannot fulfill you. And so I was looking for something, but I would never say it was God. I'd say it was love maybe, but I didn't want to say it was God because that's homophobic, right? I had that dualistic progressive view. And then I, yeah, this girl prayed for me and as she was praying for me, I felt like this tingling sensation on the top of my head and then this like oil being poured out on me. And what's really interesting in the Psalms is that it says, I've anointed my servant David with my sacred oil. So there was this kind of like Davidic. But she didn't actually have oil. No, it was like a spiritual experience of like oil. I mean, I never experienced anything like this in my life. I'd been a Wiccan witch at one point. I'd gone to psychics. I was like, had a new age kind of you know, uh, a, a stage. So I knew what like spiritual experiences that I had, you know, dwelt, kind of tried to generate in myself to have some kind of transcendence looked like. And this was like t- from, from somewhere else. It was just crazy. And then I heard this voice say, do you want me? And I was like, what the frick is going on? Like it really spooked me. Like, and it, it was like the voice of God. And three times. It's really interesting because in the Gospels, Jesus says, what do you want? And it was like God was pointing to that desire beyond any other desire that is a desire for God, you know, that eros. And um, it was like a very romantic thing. It was almost like someone saying, do you want me? Do you want, you know, this relationship? And I was like, I don't even really know who you are. Like, so I was like, I suppose so if you're real, (laughs) you know. And then I saw this veil over my heart and then this pinprick of light come into the innermost part of my being. And then I just felt like this breath breathing through me. And I was like, this is insane. What is going on? 
And I asked her, like, what is this breath thing? And she's like, it's the Holy Spirit. He loves you. And, you know, yeah. it was just incredible. Well, it sounds like supernatural. It was the best thing ever. Like, <laughs> I freaking loved it. It was spicy, you know, it was beyond spice. <laughs> yeah. And then she, I heard this voice say, will you accept my son Jesus as your Lord and Savior? As she kept praying for me. And there was this kind of wrestle over my soul. I felt like one voice saying, get away from this crazy fundamentalist. She's an idiot. You know, Sydney Morning Herald. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Or whatever, you know, it could be a conservative thing as well. But, and, and, and I, and I just, I was like, I, I have the mind of an atheist gay activist, but I have this new heart that had just like sh- appeared out of nowhere. And suddenly I was like, yes, I will. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and my mind's like, what are you doing? Like, and I just can't describe to you what it's like to have the mind of an atheist gay activist, but the a born again Christian heart. Well, maybe I, yeah. Can because you get it. Yeah. Um, and you seem to be a person who has a similar <laughs> well, well, <laughs> tension going on. Now, and yeah, carry So on. then I found out about, went home, my mum was waiting up and she said like she'd made this covenant with God that if he'd saved me, he, um, she'd know he's the God of the impossible because I was impossible to save. <laughs> and then about the prophetic word that it would happen in three months' time, my uncle, everything way back in the de- the debate, three months before this. So it was exactly three months. And I just found it all super crazy. I felt like I'd kind of woken up into a different world. Like a bit like when you read Harry Potter, you know, (laughs) it's like, and suddenly I'm sitting on park benches and feeling the Holy Spirit, like, and preaching to people and giving people like my sushi rolls at Central Station, you know, and like, I just, I was a totally different person. And you felt like God or Jesus changed your heart. Oh, totally. I've never been the same. But were you still having sex with men at that point? Um, well, it was interesting. Before that, I'd had a lot of sex and then I kind of got sick of it because it wasn't creating a relationship and I really wanted a relationship. And um, I then had some relationships and even then it wasn't fulfilling me. Like it was very kind of just, yeah, good relationship. But I think <laughs> there was this grace tugging at me all the time saying, I, like, this is the deeper desire that you think it's romantic love. And, it's not, it's me, you know, and, and I met, I met God. So I, I felt like there was an action of grace in my life, even in having lots of sex, being part of Oxford street and being a Mardi Gras parade official at 18 and, you know, going to the big, uh, it didn't fulfill me. It was, it just was empty. Um, I loved lots of people. I loved the community. Like it wasn't bad. I don't like there to criticize. I just, it didn't fulfill me. So when was the moment you realized you needed to be a celibate <laughs> Christian? That was when I, you know, to me, celibacy was disgusting. I was like, yo, like when I first became a Christian, I was like, don't know what's going on there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very much like, I'm going to have a gay marriage and I'm going to com- campaign in the church and I'm going to be changing the church's doctrine on marriage and let's go. Uh, and I, I really struggled with the Bible because I was like, eh, I'm not sure about that. But I was happy with like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and the the mystical side of faith. But I struggled with the tradition and the scriptures. And But then everything that was happening in the spirit was in the scripture. And so as I read the scripture, I was like, that's that's what happened to me yesterday. What explain the- that. Explain that. What do you mean? Like, Also, what- like I'd had these experiences of like water flowing through my soul and like this inner regeneration and Jesus said, I will salt you with fire. And I was like, that's exactly what it was like in the pub. And then I was also, you know, experiencing spiritual gifts and all sorts of other things happening. And then I found them in like Paul, which I hated because I was like, hey, Paul, I want to read freaking Paul. Can we tear that out? You know? And then yet it was all this stuff was in Paul. And then I knew somehow that like I was righteous before God, that like he had actually chosen me and saved me. And it wasn't because of me. Like I didn't do anything to earn it. And then I read that in Ephesians and I'm preaching all this stuff to the Christians on campus. And they go like, this guy, like he doesn't even, he hasn't even read scripture, but he's constantly almost paraphrasing scripture. So everything I was learning from the spirit was reflected in the scriptures. And then slowly I went through a process of trusting the scripture. 